Hey, this is Mitzi. And I'm Michelle, her best friend and sidekick. And today we're going to be making Aunt Callie's Old Time Chocolate Cake. It's actually a yellow cake, but it has homemade boiled chocolate icing. And we're making this especially for Michelle's mama, Pat. Her birthday's Tuesday, but we're having her surprise party today. She's going to be 71 years old. So Pat, we hope you love this cake, and we want to let you know that we love you very much. And happy birthday, mama. So, let's get started baking. So here are the ingredients that you're going to need. And here's a list of just the cake ingredients, and this will be a yellow cake. Now here are the ingredients for the icing. So what Michelle's doing here is greasing the pans. You want to get a, a light coat of Crisco or some type of shortening on the pan. And this is going to be coated with flour and this is to keep the cake from sticking. You can use a spray that has the flour and the oil already together and that works good too. But if you'll see, she's tapping the sides to get an even coat all the way around. You're going to have more flour left over when you get done with this. Just throw it in the trash. You won't need it for anything. You'll just tap it over the trash can and get the excess out. So we're going to start with our sugar and then our butter that has come to room temperature and got really soft. You can use butter or margarine. Uh, Callie's recipe called for margarine, but what we're using today is just real salted butter. And you want to whip this together. It's really important that you follow the steps that I'm showing you to bake a cake from scratch. And from scratch means using the flour, whether it's all purpose and some baking powder to make it rise, some salt, or whether it is the flour that I'm using here, which is self-rising flour. You'll want to do these steps, and if you'll notice, I'm adding eggs one at a time. These eggs also have come to room temperature. That's an important part in baking a cake also. So what I'm going to do next is put in the flour and the milk. And you'll see when I get started that there is um, a certain way that we need to do this. You can't just dump it all in at one time. So I'm starting with flour. And I'm going to mix it into the 
wet mixture that I've already got in here. And when you put flour in, you need to start off slow. It can turn into a big mess when you put something dry in there. So I'm putting half of my milk wrong again. And once that's incorporated, we're going to put another third of the flour. You want to always start with flour and end with flour. Start with your dry ingredients, end with your dry ingredients, except for the vanilla flavor. If you'll notice, I always turn my mixer off when I add the flour in. This is just to keep from slinging it out and having a big, big mess. And I'm starting off slow. Let that get incorporated a little bit, and then I can turn it up. remember Callie telling me that she used to let it beat for three minutes and she used a hand mixer so I've got it a lot easier than she did. This recipe is from my aunt who she lived to be in her 80s and that's one thing that she was famous for was her cake. can add the vanilla flavoring and if you'll notice the flavoring that I have is happy home flavoring this is an imitation vanilla flavoring I got this at Hawks Market in Elkin So here you see the floured pans. We're going to divide that between the two. This is a little bit of a, a thick batter. I'm shaking it to get any air bubbles out of it, kind of tapping it a little bit. I've 
got my oven preheated to 350 degrees. You want to put this on the middle rack of your oven and let this cook about 30 minutes. You can test it with a fork or if you have a cake tester when it comes out clean, it is done. I'm just using a wooden skewer to test mine. You can pull it out and test it every so often, but I've let these bake 30 minutes. And it is clean, so these are done. Now I've put it on a rack and let it cool down just a little bit. Now Michelle is going to start the icing. It's uh, it's not a have to to use a cast iron skillet, but for some reason in my family that's what we make it in. So Michelle has took the sugar and the cocoa and mixed it together, and now she's putting the butter and the milk. You want to get this stirred up really good. I've got her having it on to medium high, I believe. Just keep stirring it together until you get everything melted. This is similar to a ganache, except it's cooked a lot harder. Um, Now you can see that it's almost to the to the um, point that the butter has melted. And we want to get this turned up just a little bit and come into what's called a rolling boil. And then we'll start timing it. You may think it's ready to time, but not quite yet. This is starting to become a rolling bowl. You can see it bubbling up from the middle and rolling to the outside. So once this comes to a full rolling bowl, you're going to time this for three minutes. It's important to keep it stirred. Now after three minutes, we've had a little bit of a time lapse, but we let it boil for three minutes, and then she put in the vanilla, and you're gonna do one more minute. and then take it off the heat. Stir it around until it stops bubbling and cools off and starts to get just a little bit thicker. That has to cool down Be really careful if you're using a cast iron skillet. The handle does get hot. Is it thick? So it's cooled down some. Now what she's doing is poking holes in the cake. And this is going to allow a little bit of the hot icing to go down into it. You want to put it on something that's going to catch what runs off. If you 
put it on just a regular plate at this point, you might have a little bit of a mess. So what she's doing now is actually holding uh, the holes open and getting that icing down in there real good. That's one thing that everybody liked about this cake is when you cut into it, you don't just have the icing on top, but you've got the chocolate running all the way down through it in places. So the second uh, layer has been put on top and now's the time that you want to work really quickly. I have poured it over the top of it, what was left in the pan, and I'm working what's on the top around to the sides. I, I already poked holes in the top and did just like Michelle did to get some of that down into that second layer. But if you can see, it's starting to thicken up. The cooler it gets, the harder this icing is going to get. It's almost going to be like candy when we get done. You can't be slow doing this kind of a cake. And what's going to happen is if you let this icing get too thick and too cool, when you try to spread it on your cake, it's gonna pull the cake. And it's gonna make make an ugly cake, which this one's not near as pretty as Callie's cakes. And you will have some that's trying to run out of the middle. And you just keep going around and catching it and spreading it until it's going to get to a point that you're going to tell that you can't spread it anymore. And you need to stop when you get to that point. So it's still coming out. From between the layers and I'm trying to to be really gentle with it you don't want to push hard when you're spreading this ice And I'm almost to the point that I'm going to need to stop messing with this cake. So there it is. This is Callie's Old Time Chocolate Cake. It may be our first attempt at it, but it will not be our last. And you know what they say, an ugly cake guarantees it's going to taste good. Let's hope so. For Pat's sake. Oh yeah, it's going to be good. <laughs> it smells really good. Really good. So try this recipe and see if you can make this cake turn out prettier than ours. And send a picture or put it in the comments and let's see what your old-timey chocolate cake looks like. 
so now I'm going to show you what the inside of this cake looks like. And you'll see that the top is, like I said, like a candy coating. It's not real hard, but it's hard enough that it's going to crack a little bit. Aww. Don't that look good? All you need is a glass of milk or a cup of coffee and some of Callie's cake. Thank you to my best friend Michelle, Hawks Market in Elkin for the flavoring and James Breaky, my sound tech. Please like, share, comment and subscribe on Facebook and YouTube. And as always, thank you for watching Mitzi's Market Fresh Meals.